everyone and thank you for joining us on this call to discuss the earnings for the fourth quarter and for the financial year 2023-24 we have sustained robust momentum in our performance with stellar growth in revenue ebitda and profit after tax both for the quarter and the full year this performance validates the strong execution across core operations as well as the scaling up of new business lines there are strong tailwinds at present for our sector due to several years of under investment and we are pleased to be at the forefront of this exciting opportunity we are delighted to announce that the total income amounted to rupees uh, 1100 crore plus in in quarter 4 marking a impressive year on year increase of 57% abitta has shown remarkable growth soaring to 14772 lakhs reflecting a substantial 59% year on year increase the abitta margin was 13.3% in q4 fy24 highlighting a focused execution strategy as we continued to report industry leading margins notably profit after tax has surged by 156% year on year reaching 10422 lakh we are proud to have achieved the significant milestone of surpassing 1 lakh 10000 of revenue in a single quarter for the first time ever this exceptional performance in the fourth quarter caps off remarkable financial year for jupiter wagons limited characterized by record breaking revenues of over 3600 crores and a profit after tax of 33279 lakhs in fy 2023-24 given the strong performance the board of directors has recommended a final dividend of 30 paise per share accompanied by the interim dividend of rupees 30 paise per share the combined dividend for financial year 2023-24 amounts to 60 paise per share resulting in a meaningfully higher payout to shareholders let me first start with railways we continue to see robust demand from both the public and private sectors over recent years there has been a notable increase in government funding directed towards the railway sector accompanied by a marked rise in actual spending notably three new railway corridors are presently under construction promising significant relief from congestion within india's rail network Moreover over the past 12 to 18 months numerous substantial contracts have been awarded spanning bullet trains vande bharat train sets high power locomotives freight wagons forge wheels and more railway authorities have implemented various strategies to bolster their share in the freight transportation mix projections indicate a rise in the rail freight modal mix from 29% in fiscal year 2024 to 35% by fiscal year 2031 driven by factors such as cost and efficiency of rail over road gdp growth improved infrastructure and connect- connectivity supported by increased government focus on rail freight in the freight segment private sector involvement in wagon procurement has surged significantly void by government initiatives like liberalized wagon investment scheme automobile freight uh, train operator scheme and wagon leasing scheme as a result demand for freight wagon is expected to witness substantial and sustained growth passenger services to remain a focal point with capacity being expanded for passenger rail as well as development through metro rail projects in several indian cities in terms of outlook we are pleased to report order backlog of rupees 
10,166, our highest ever. This has been aided by order wins from both public and private sector customers, including Ministry of Railways, Ministry of Defense, and a leading auto manufacturer. These contracts involve the manufacturing and supply of various types of wagon, bolstering our order backlog and providing strong visibility for the future. Jupiter con continues to maintain its position as a leading provider of private wagons in the industry. During the quarter, we acquired Bonatrans India Private Limited, which further solidifies our integrated business model. It empowers us with the critical ability to manufacture wheel sets in-house, thus enhancing our vertical integration and overall production efficiency. This strategic move underscores our commitment to bolstering our capabilities and ensuring a more streamlined and cohesive production process. By bringing wheel set manufacturing under umbrella, we are poised to achieve greater control over quality, timelines, and cost effectiveness, thereby solidifying our position in the market and driving sustained growth. This development marks a significant milestone in our journey towards excellence and underscores our relentless pursuit of innovation and operational excellence. Further, as part of Make in India initiative and reduce import dependence, dependency, we would set up manufacturing facilities for complete backward integration of wheel set manufacturing. Further, the integration process following the acquisition of Stone India is progressing smoothly and remains on track. Looking ahead to fiscal year 2025, we are optimistic about our prospects, particularly with eminent launch of our ELCVs. Additionally, plans are underway to expand our brake system and braking business, further enhancing our outlook for the coming year. In our braking system and brake disc segment, we are witnessing encouraging progress in line with our expectations. We anticipate a significant increase in execution and performance throughout fiscal year 2025 and remain confident in the growth trajectory of these businesses. With that, we are ready to take questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Mohit Kumar from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening, sir, and congratulations on a very good set of numbers. So my first question is, uh, uh, what would happen to private private wagon ordering for F524, and is it possible to give us a sense of market share and the outlook for F525? Yeah, good evening, Mohit, and uh, thank you. Uh, see, uh, private, again, Jupiter continues to dominate the private segment. So if you look at the uh, private order books, I think uh, Jupiter's share would be more than uh, 60 to 70% in this segment. Uh, this year, we have delivered the maximum number of uh, private rakes. I think over 100 drakes have been delivered by Jupiter, which is by far, uh, the uh, if you compare to the rest of the industry, there is a significant uh, difference between us and our next competitor. Uh, going forward also, our private order book remains very robust. I think 40% of our order book is still private, and we continue to see the momentum. 
and this year we will be uh, manufacturing a, a very uh, i think more of a uh, order book will be much more specialized wagons both in the steel cement as well as the auto segment uh, and which uh, you know would continue be to be uh, industry leading designs so last year we had a very good opportunity from the government side from the indian railway side directly so is there any correlation think about think, think about the opportunity from the indian railway this particular year and is there any tender which is uh, which is awaiting to be closed as of now yeah already there is one tender uh, i don't remember the i think it's close to about uh, for 6000 wagons which is uh, uh, is going to be finalized very shortly but beyond that also we see the growth momentum to continue and uh, the freight loading numbers have been uh, increasing substantially which we can see as well as uh, the co sector especially you know the demand for uh, the coal for the steel uh, and uh, other co sectors remain very strong and we expect the growth momentum to continue i think post elections we should see uh, significant tenders uh, coming up so my last question is sir, what is the plan for bona trans india can you please help us with you know a medium term outlook you know what is the kind of capacity you're looking at what is the kind of capex you require to achieve that capacity so this year we are looking to uh, produce about close to uh, 15 to 18000 wheel sets in in bona trans and we are looking at uh, revenues of about 400 odd crores uh, this will i think significantly help us as uh, you know this uh, a lot of the production will be uh, captive and that will definitely help uh, jupiter in terms of our own freight production as well as our, our margins Uh, beyond that i think our focus is uh, to completely backward integrate uh, this facility uh, we plan to do it over the next uh, 18 to 24 months uh, there will be a sizable investment there and uh, we already have the technology lined up through our foreign uh, our partnerships in europe further i think there is a significant export potential because one of our significant uh, partners and promoters in jupiter wagon which is uh, tatra wagon ka they are uh, again very keen to acquire wheel sets from india and right now they are facing a challenge because of the russia and ukraine conflict so uh, yes so we are very uh, bullish about that business and this to sir thank you all of this thank you Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. In order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all the participants, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we will request you to rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Rishabh Parekh from Sunidhi Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi thanks for taking my question uh, just a couple of questions one is uh, you know on bona trans uh, can you all uh, give some more color on the kind of capacity expansion that we will be doing uh, in terms of you know how many wheels that will we'll be able to manufacture once the full capacity is on stream and revenue and margin impact on that and what would be the amount of the capex spend So in terms of capacity i think we are looking to produce uh, around 200000 uh, wheel sets that is what the capacity uh, 2000 uh, 200000 wheels uh, which is about 100000 wheel sets so that is the capacity plans which we have out of which a significant portion definitely will be earmarked for exports Uh, as you are aware that Bora Trans already has all the necessary certifications, both in India for supplying uh, to the metro as well as for Vande Bharat. Uh, today, Bora Trans is a significant supplier to Siemens, to Alstom, to BML uh, for the Vande Bharat as well as the LHB coaches. Uh, we are supplying wheel sets, so all the necessary Indian uh, as well as freight. So all the Indian accreditation is there. further it is accredited to supply to europe as well as to north america 
So the idea is to build capacities so that we can play a significant role in these markets. In terms of investments, I think our capex in this business will be uh, anything between 1,000 to 1,500 crores of capex which we are looking to invest in this business. And uh, uh, margins, again, uh, I would not like to comment on margins right now, but uh, definitely uh, compared to the uh, the wagon business, the margins are, are, are higher in, in the wheel set segment. And just a follow-up question on this, so that, you know, we are going to do 15 to 18,000 wheel sets in FY25. So, um, what could be the uh, improvement in our margin? Because a lot of these would be for captives. So, how much uh, margin uh, expansion can we see in FY25 because of integrated wheel sets? So, again, uh, but uh, I will not comment on the uh, the overall uh, in terms of uh, numbers, but uh, what I would say is that definitely compared to FY24 uh, and FY25, not only because of wheel sets, but because of the braking business and the other new segments which the company has entered, there will be uh, an improvement in margins and it will be a very visible improvement in margins. It will not be something marginal, but there will be a visible improvement in margins. And, and, and so, sure, and you know, can you give us some color on Covis and DACO for 25? So as I've been telling in all my earlier calls that this year you will see the execution in both the businesses. I think combined in both the businesses we have order books of more than 300 crore plus and there is going to be significant exports also happening. So I think yeah, FI25 is when you are going to start seeing revenues and profits uh, being accredited in both the businesses. And a ballpark revenue number can it be about 500 or crores? We are looking at at least about 300 crores of revenue at least in both the businesses. Sure. And so, you know, last question on uh, uh, our uh, net debt, so post acquisition and the QIP, what is our net debt position? Uh, net debt is uh, around uh, zero uh, because the long term borrowing we don't have and we have the sufficient cash available. And if you take the uh, 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 short term borrowing also, so it is around zero. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of CA Garved Goel from Advest Analysis Advisors LLP. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, Anna Odell, sir? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir, and congrats for a good set of numbers. Uh, my question is on the uh, bonus plans only. Uh, just a clarification on, like you mentioned, in this year uh, we will uh, close to around 300 CR kind of top line. So just to understand a bit, uh, like uh, are we going to produce for uh, the outside players or are we going to the captive consumption? Because you mentioned two things here. So can you clarify the thing? Yeah, uh, so good evening and thank you. Uh, so yeah, no, as I mentioned in Borantans, it will be both captive as well as the... Uh, out, uh, as well as the uh, out, outward market because uh, that is again a significant business for us. As I mentioned that we are already a primary supplier for most of the metro projects in India as well as for the Vande Bharat and LHB passenger coaches. So that business is going to continue to remain a significant business for us and the uh, compared to uh, freight, uh, you know, per wheel side, both the in terms of the pricing and definitely in terms of margins, because these are more complicated wheel sets, so it's uh, much better than uh, on the freight business. So it will be a mix of both captive as well as uh, I think outward business. So 300 CR is from the outward business. That 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 is that understanding correct? No, no, 300, uh, basically, three, I said it will be between 300 to 400 crores. It will be, that includes both the captive as well as the output. No, if it is out, uh, captive consumption, then how it will be, uh, uh, it will be there in the top line. It can't be there in the top line, right? No, no, the so total revenue which we are expecting from Warner Trans and FY25 uh, is around 400 crores. 
this four, uh, 400 crores will include both the captive business as well as the outward business. But in terms of the breakup uh, specific numbers right now, we will we are not in a position to share. Okay, sir. Okay, fine. Uh, and sir, board approved uh, 1,000 CR QIP. So, can you please put some color of the purpose of raising those funds? Like, uh, what are the exact plans for the utilization of these funds? Uh, like, uh, you mentioned about some new products, including those uh, automatic doors and the vacuum toilets as well. So, uh, can you please elaborate on your plans on uh, on it? Like, uh, what is the expected KPEX from it and how the funds are going to be utilized? I think uh, for us right now, the most significant and the major capex is towards our wheel business where we see a, a very uh, assured uh, road map and the market which is uh, there and as i mentioned that it is a, a very margin positive business so most of the i think uh, whenever we do the fundraise will be towards uh, the capex requirement of the wheel business and definitely some portion of it will be used for other businesses but the significant investments will go towards the wheel business. Right, sir. And so in this quarter, uh, we did oh, a sorry to interrupt, Garvin. Just the last question. Just the last question. Just the last question, please. Uh, in this quarter, uh, we did a run rate of 840 uh, per month for the railway wagons. So, considering that uh, we are currently at 900 capacities, right, and with significant orders to be executed in next 12 months, like you mentioned, and order book is also reflecting the same. So, do you see any uh, slowdown in ramping up these orders or upcoming order inflows? And if not, then so what are your plans to further expand on the capacities on the wagon side beyond uh, 1,000 wagons per month? Sir? So as I mentioned, we are right now, our target is to achieve 1,000 wagons. Uh, we are not looking to uh, to expand beyond that as of now. But then again, that is also subject to how the order book flows over the, over the coming years. We don't see any significant slowdown in the order books. Uh, I think on the contrary, post-elections, you will see uh, uh, whatever indications which we have, there will be an uptake in terms of the uh, demand. So, uh, again, our first target is to achieve uh, a consistent uh, run rate of about 1,000 wagons. I from there on, we will uh, decide as, as how to move forward. So, by when it is expected to? Uh, uh, 1,000. Uh, by, I think, quarter two is, is what we are looking at. Okay, sir. Fine, sir. Fine. Uh, Congrats uh, congrats again and uh, all the best for the future. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mahesh Bendri from LIC Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, sir, uh, on wagon side, the incremental orders that are, that are expected to come up maybe uh, during the year, uh, given the current uh, uh, order book of all the wagon manufacturers, do you think there is a scope for us to improve our uh, uh, realizations in those new uh, orders of wagons and margins could be much higher in those? Yeah, uh, yeah Mahesh, so uh, definitely as I had mentioned in my call that, uh, you know, we are right now focusing on a lot on the private order book. And there also, uh, there are certain new designs of wagons which we are currently in the process of executing, which, uh, you know, those are very complicated designs and most of the uh, industry is not producing those wagons. I think Jupiter is the only producer of those wagons. So there's uh, definitely we expect the margins to improve and combined with, uh, you know, Breaks getting produced in house and wheel sets again becoming captive. So definitely there will be a impact on the margins. And sir, is it also true for the railway business also? The railway wagons? So railway. Uh, so on the railway side, definitely the I uh, I there is no uh, in terms of I think the margins are consistent and they are going to remain like that. But definitely you going forward you will not see any significant uptake in margins. The uh, uptake in margins in the railway business will happen through uh, through the uh, you know the efficiencies which we bring into the uh, business. Sure, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
The next question is from the line of Bharat Shah from ASK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, wanted to understand the cash flows for the year. Operating uh, and the financing and investment uh, cash flows. So I will give the line to uh, Mr. Sanjeev, the CFO. He will guide you on that. Yeah, the operating cash flow uh, this year we have generated the cash of around 100 crores, and uh, after the uh, payment of the income tax, there is a use of the uh, uh, actually uh, in the operating around six crores only. But that actually increased due to uh, we increase our product uh, sales revenue from 2000 crore to 3600 crores, and consequently that inventory has increased by around 400 crores. So this is the reason that uh, uh, you are finding that there is a cash used uh, around six crores in the operating uh, cash flow. I wanted all the breakup of the cash flow, operating finance uh, investment cash flow for the year. Yeah, it is available. Uh, uh, yesterday, uh, as per the uh, LODR requirement, the cash flow is already uh, given to the stock exchange. So you will find that detailed cash flow there. Okay, I'll, I'll check that out. Sorry, I missed that. And uh, on the order book, uh, what I heard was about uh, 7,100 crore, right? Uh, yes, yes, you are right. And uh, what is the breakup of that, and uh, what kind of execution cycle do we see? So, uh, I think of the 7,000, majority of it is related to our wagon order book. Uh, I think close to about 75%, 75 would be wagon, and uh, I think these order books have to be executed over the next 18 months. And the balance? Balance would be related to the uh, to the CV business, uh, the commercial vehicle business uh, which we have, the containers and the uh, brake system also. And that would be fulfilled by both time. Uh, in uh, in this financial year, FI25. The entire uh, remaining almost about 17, 18 hundred crore of uh, CV business. Would be uh, would be executed in the current year. Yes, correct, absolutely. And uh, from the vegan business, uh, I presume uh, in the year maybe two thirds of the order book will get utilized. As I've told you, was eighteen plus, uh, eighteen months is the execution timeline, and uh, you know every quarter we keep on adding significant order books. So uh, it'll be it'll be there'll be a rollover which will happen on the order book side. So and as as you have seen over the last uh, year year and a half, though our execution uh, has increased significantly, but our order book keeps on uh, increasing quarter on quarter. So I think uh, it'll uh, you'll continue to see those trends going forward also. So 1700 crore of CV, about uh, 3600 of. Uh, vegan, so that makes it 5,300, and maybe some amount of the current year order book executed. So about 55, 5,600 crore turnover is a reasonable possibility, right, for the current year? Again, you know, uh, specific numbers uh, we are not in the habit of disclosing, but yes, uh, if you look at the breakups, uh, uh, something on, in the similar vicinity. Is what we are looking at. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Parvesh Kazi from Nuama Group. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good afternoon, sir, and uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, congrats on a good set of numbers. Uh, so, two questions from my side. One uh, would be great if uh, you could discuss how are we seeing the uh, private sector ordering as far as the wagon business is concerned. Uh, and second, uh, also on our brake business, how uh, has the ordering and tendering been in FY24 and what is, uh, how do we see uh, FY25 panning out? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Parvez. Uh, so, uh, in terms of the private order book, I don't, I, as I mentioned that, uh, you know, the order inflow is very strong. 
and this is uh, despite the fact that currently uh, wagons under gpis scheme basically the box and wagons there is uh, still uh, uh, the railway has not lifted the uh, they had put a temporary hold on that which we also expected to uh, get lifted uh, uh, post elections but despite that i think the the order book has remained very very significant and uh, we are uh, now executing uh, a lot of designs which are are very unique and uh, are being done uh, for the first time and where uh, jupiter is maybe one of a very few uh, of the wagon builders who are executing these designs so this gives us a significant uh, chance to improve our margins as well as uh, to further build on these uh, these order books and i think as and when the uh, the requirement for the box and wagon comes up i think that will be significant because whatever we can understand from the industry is that still there is a huge uh, requirement for these wagons so as and when railway uh, clears the same you will see a substantial uh, jump in terms of the ordering which is going to happen in those thanks sir and a similar outlook on the brakes business on the braking side i think the demand continues to be very robust as you know the rolling stock program is 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 uh, of of the railways is very significant so as well as uh, now you are seeing a lot of replacement demand uh, coming in because the uh, both in terms of the passenger as well as on the freight side the fleet utilization has gone up significantly so uh, i think you are going to as i have uh, been mentioning uh, i think year on year you are going to see significant increase in terms of uh, the total uh, requirements for breaking uh, from the breaking business so sir thanks and all the best yeah thank you thank you the next question is from the line of gagandeep from invest analytics advises llp please go ahead yes gagandeep participant line got disconnected the next question is from the line of rishab parik from sanity securities please go ahead uh, uh can you just throw some light on the uh, the arch um, container business yeah, uh, yes yes the so the container uh, we are again very bullish on the container business uh, this year i think has been a transitional year for us uh, with regard to that business we have moved from uh, earlier we were making the very generic marine containers but this year we have moved on to manufacture very uh, specialized containers especially related to bes and data centers uh, so that has been our core uh, focus uh, we are now working with a lot of marquee names uh, global names such as uh, g schneider uh, toshiba uh uh tata solar so these are the kind of names which we are now working with and the certain containers which we are producing which have been produced uh, for the first time in india and i think going forward uh, we will continue to focus on these segments and i think the next step this year which we are moving towards is providing the complete integrated uh, solutions both for uh, best as well as uh, for data centers and uh, given government's focus in both the segments and especially uh, for power storage in the solar sector that has been a key challenge so we see significant uh, order books coming in this segment and uh, uh, you know just i wanted to understand your capacity expansion plan because in your presentation it mentions that uh, 1000 uh, wagons per month will come on stream once the 2000 ton foundry is uh, uh uh started which will take 18 months but uh, to the previous uh, participant you mentioned that it will start in q2 the run rate of 1000 wagons per month so i was just a little confused uh no 
Then wagons will come. See, we are doing two uh, foundry capacity expansions. One is on the existing foundry, and one we are looking at a new foundry in Jabalpur. So uh, the thousand will come in as soon as the uh, the expansion which takes place in the existing foundry, which we are expecting in Q Q2 end of uh, before end of Q2 the that capacity will become online. So that is when. Uh, Around that time is when also we are seeing going to see an increase in our wagon numbers happening. Understood. And the additional uh, 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 two thousand ton foundry will add as how much capacity? So there, uh, you know, yeah. Given that one, which will definitely help us in terms of margins, because again in Jabalpur, if we have a captive capacity, we'll save a lot on the transport costs. And secondly, we are looking. Uh, I think one business which we are very focused on is on the weldable crossing side, where we have significant orders and the outlook is very strong, because I think in the next three to four years, what we can understand is the railway is looking to buy more than a hundred thousand of these crossings. So mm-hmm. today we are our main constraint is on the capacity. So we are now looking to bring uh, build significant capacity for this business. So I think a lot of that capacity, which will get freed up, will go towards that business. Ah, uh, uh, understood. And and sir, can you just throw some light on our rights JV? There is no JV. We have a MOU with rights where we participate together in in lot of the glo- uh, most of the global tenders. So that is uh, in uh, you know the, that MOU continues, and uh, we are regularly participating in tenders. I think this global tenders take time to convert into order books, and we expect. I think in FI 25, we should see significant order books coming out from these tenders. And uh, so last Sorry point. Sorry to interrupt, Prishab. Sure, I request sure. you to rejoin the queue. Sure. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Akash from Dalal and Brocha. Please go ahead. <coughs> Yeah, thank you for the opportunity and first of all, uh, uh, congrats to the management and the great set of numbers. Uh, yeah, so, uh, sir, would request a breakup uh, for the complete full year FI 24 revenue that we did of 3,640 odd crores. If you could give a breakup for that, uh, product segment wise. Okay, uh, thank you, Akash, and I'll pass on the line to. I think he could yeah. share. Akash, Akash, you can uh, mail to us. We will give the detailed breakup. Right now, I am not carrying that breakup. But uh, on a uh, on a uh, broad Broadway, uh, around uh, 76 or 77 percent is from the wagon, and balance is from the other CV business and containers in- includes. Okay, sir. Uh, mm-hmm. No worries. We'll take it offline. My second question was. Uh, uh, on the brake system and the brake disc side, sir, uh, wherein you all said that they, both businesses combined, you all should be able to manage around 300 crore plus of revenue, right? Uh, so what kind of margins are we expecting there? Uh, again, as I've mentioned earlier, the uh, these uh, the margin profiles are much better than in terms of our existing business. So uh, you will see margins upward of definitely up, 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 upward of 14, 15 uh, percent. For for these uh, for COVID and DACO, right? Uh, yes. Or uh, company level as a whole. At uh, yeah, at the not at the in in these two businesses at the business levels. Okay, got it, sir. Uh, Secondly, we we had some uh, interesting order wins this year, especially you know uh, we won that uh, special military wagons wherein uh, they were the higher value wagons, also the double decker wagons for automobile. If you could just let us know uh, what is the delivery schedule for those kind of wagons, the the orders that we won this year from Indian Railways. So uh, we are continuing to supply the military wagons. Those that is ongoing. For the double decker wagons, uh, our uh, prototypes are going to go for approvals uh, in this month itself, and I think uh, August or September is when we are looking to start supplying those wagons. Okay, and the recent one which we won in March. Sorry that is to the, interrupt, uh, Akash. 
Can you rejoin for your follow-up questions? Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahil Dasani from Mithal Analyst. Please go ahead. Yeah, I'm audible. So can yes. you be loud? Yeah, is it better now? Yes, sir. Please. Okay. So first of all, good afternoon, sir, and thank thank you for the opportunity. So I had a question around the Vande Bharat. So we can see a lot of Vande Bharat tenders coming in right now, and the bidding here is quite competitive from the international players like TMS who recently won the 120 trains tender and the next in line are Alstom, Shadner and the Tetagar JV. So what sort of participation do we expect from our side excluding the view set and any upcoming tenders where we are taking part? So, uh, excluding wheel size, I think on the braking side, uh, we have significant participations in these. We are, uh, uh, where we, you will see uh, Jupiter coming in. Uh, along with that, I think uh, from Simmons, we have uh, received an order for supply of uh, battery systems, which is part of the EV side of our business uh, for the Vande Bharat. So, yeah, definitely, I think, and wheel set is something, again, I think, uh, as for the wheel set, as I mentioned, that we are a significant supplier for wheel sets for the Vande Bharat. So, all these, I think, if you look at uh, these two, three businesses which I'm talking about, see, if you look at a coach, uh, the value uh, uh, ours would be about 40, anything between 30 to 40 percent of the total overall value of a coach. Okay. And lastly, like I said, these three four entities are who are dominating the tenders right now. So are we partnered with any of these entities and how do we see the competition between the Indian JVs in comparison to these international entities? So right now, see, we are, as I have told you, we are working closely with the likes of... Uh, say, uh, Simmons, uh, but definitely we are not partnering with them to, uh, partnering with anybody to bid for the tenders, because again, which we feel that uh, these are very margin negative, uh, right now the pricing is very margin negative, and we, there is, and in future also we don't see many significant tenders for Vande Bharat, for the complete supply of Vande Bharat coming, because most of the railway workshops are now uh, manufacturing it. But there is a significant demand for the component levels, such as, uh, you know, the brake systems, the wheel sets, the battery systems. And that's where, uh, you know, these are very high technology items. So, uh, it's, it's again, the competition is very limited because it requires a lot of accreditation and technology. So, these are the areas where we are focused on and I think uh, we are at a, in a very strong position. So that is where we will continue to focus on. Okay. And lastly, if I'm not wrong, Sorry we were... Sorry to interrupt, Rahil. I request you to rejoin the queue for your follow-up questions. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankita Rathi from Rainbow Securities Private Limited. Please go ahead. Hello. Hi. Thank you for the opportunity. I have a question that uh, in your PPT presentation, I mean investor presentation, you have mentioned uh, the GWL COVIS numbers. So the numbers in break disk assemblies are zero in quarter four FI24. Can you just give me the reason for it? Uh, Ankita, I am uh, honestly have not looked at those. Uh, I have to revert back to it, but yes. I think uh, uh, the reason could be that, uh, you know, we were focusing on the uh, on the export. I think quarter four is where we were looking at, uh, we had a lot of export orders, so our focus was on the exports. So the assemblies, I think we started, we have already started from uh, FI25. And what I can understand is that at that time, uh, we had all the old orders which we had, those deliveries we had completed, and for the new orders, uh, for about, we have currently orders for about 12,000 break disk supplies. The deliveries were all commencing from uh, Q1 FI25. I think that's 
this was the only reason okay about the exports like the exports number are also not very high it's only 606 numbers in quarter 4 fy24 rather than it was 2194 numbers in quarter 3 fy24 no if you look at that other components 4199 that is also part of the export numbers and i think in that last quarter as i told you the the production was going on all the revenues you will uh, see the revenue booking happening in in q1 so i think once the q1 results uh, come out uh, you can uh, you know you will get a very clear picture of of the trend okay and also one more question uh, the cms crossing numbers so that's why uh, you see that uh, drop which has happened uh one last question the cms crossing numbers have also declined from sorry the last to interrupt year. ankita i request you to rejoin the queue for your follow up questions so ankita to answer your last uh, you know as i mentioned that we are right now uh, in terms of the foundry capacity is a constraint for us because as you have seen that our wagon numbers have increased significantly so lot of the capacity was towards uh, wagons and that's why there is a drop in the cms numbers and i have mentioned as i mentioned earlier that as we keep on adding more capacity you will see a renewed focus on in that business okay thank you so much thank you the next question is from the line of bharat shah from ask investment managers please go ahead uh, uh, uh we did about 3600 crore uh, turnover in the and you are gone by when do you think we can be 10000 crore business uh, same 3 to 4 times would it be outlandish to think that in 3 to 4 years we can be that size or in so reality uh, so bhaji definitely not uh, you know as i mentioned that uh, once the uh, on the wheel side i think once the capex is done that is going to be a significant contributor if we produce about 100000 wheel sets we are looking at revenues of upward of 3000 crores there uh, breaks have, as i mentioned in the next 3 years we are looking that to be a 1000 crore business for us so definitely uh, we are very very bullish and on on our numbers and uh, so uh, no i think we yeah, are 3 to 4 years you could uh, overall at a company level definitely is something which uh, is uh, uh, within the our target limits so which means uh, less than 1000 crore turnover in fiscal 22 financial year 22 say by 28 we can be more than 10 times uh, the business that we did in financial year 22 yeah definitely definitely okay. all the best Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mahesh Atal from Atal and Associations. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. My first question would be on. Uh, so the foundry thing that we are going to come up in Jabalpur. What would be the capital outlay for that? Uh, I think we are marked about close to 200 uh, crores, if I am not wrong. Yes. Uh, for. Yeah, yeah. but. Uh, Sir, my follow-up on that would be uh, why uh, we are looking to do it on a greenfield thing uh, when there are other foundries and there are inorganic opportunities. Are you also looking in that direction to acquire any for foundry or something like that, rather than waiting for 18 months and uh, because there are RDS approved foundries, right? So, but uh, you know, as and when if there is some opportunity comes up, definitely we will look at it. But as far as I know, there is. Uh, given the buoyancy in the sector right now there is uh, you, there is no capacity which is available in the industry and one more thing sir uh, and yeah. my, uh, in the in the devri jabalpur we have a huge land bank av- uh, available with us so we are just uh, utilizing that land bank uh, no that's okay but i was more referring on the time because it will take 18 month time for you to do that right so no i am anyways but uh, however i don't think there is any capacity today which is available in the industry all right uh, and one more thing sir uh, regarding uh, any uh, thing uh, right now we are having under testing approvals 
which could add significantly to our uh, top lines which is under rdso approval or something like that i think one of us one of the most significant products is the weldable uh, crossing which is uh, i think we are going to get the final approvals in in a couple of months and that i have as i mentioned that it's the again in terms of uh, the approved sources there are only uh, three to four approved sources in that segment and uh, the indication is that in the next 2 to 3 years because again indian railway is moving towards high speed so most of the traditional crossings will be replaced uh, by weldable and all the new uh, uh, lines which are coming up will be all uh, will have all weldable crossings only so you are will... all the approved sources under this weldable crossing any main somewhere no so whatever the interactions which we had with indian railways uh, they are very clear that uh, oh the the other sources which are there yeah yeah I, yeah yeah uh, mainly global players like uh, uh, waslo is there then uh, uh, wild alpine is there i think it's mainly the global players who are the approved sources so you will be the first indigenous players who will be doing that right one of the first yes yes okay all right all right sir. thank you all the best so we have a foreign partnership already we have a partnership with a spanish firm called talvez they are one of the main producers in europe so uh, they are helping us with the technology any revenue guidance on this particular business i mean uh, if we do i think get the approval and uh, what could be the revenue potential of this particular thing so revenue potential is significant but again as i have told you i think as and when we have the uh, the capacities available uh, you will start so again very uh, i think i would not like to give any kind of uh, revenue guide yeah, but the current market price uh, at least uh, india's much indian perspective so uh, it is about uh, the market is about for 4 to 5000 crores is the uh, the market size and will be the only indian player there so yes. we may expect a sizable opportunity there yes indian player with sizable capacity Sure. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Santil Kumar from Joindre Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Am I audible? Yes. Sir. Uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. I have a two questions. Uh, first one is uh, for the additional capital requirements uh, for expansion. Uh, will the board resort? Uh, to equity dilution or preferably go, will go for a debt sir so uh, certainly it will be a mix of equity as well as debt the board i think has cleared a uh, uh, fresh uh, set of uh, i think of 1000 crores of new capital fund raise the board has cleared so it will be a mix of uh, both debt as well as equity so uh, what, what will be the mix sir again uh, i think uh, we have not formed us our plans as uh, once it's uh, we have formed it up we will uh, definitely appraise you on the same okay okay understand and my second question is uh, now that uh, order share from the government is increasing will this debt or period uh, correspondingly go up in future uh, actually we have noticed that you know if i 24 data days is increased from 49 sorry 37 days to 49 days uh, so what will be the data this in uh, for fi 25 no i think it will uh, data position you will not see any kind of significant increase in the data position it is going to uh, remain between the uh, the, uh, the data position i think is going to be very consistent okay, thank you sir that's it from my side thank you the next question is from the line of ca garvit goel from invest analysis advisors llp please go ahead hi uh, thanks for the opportunity again uh, sir just on the uh, electric lcd side uh, why are we getting delayed in terms of getting the approval from uh, the regulatory authority sir so there is no delay uh, uh, we are expecting the approvals all our testing is now complete so we are expecting the approvals uh, to come any day i think in the next uh, week or 10 days i think we expect approvals to be there 
and uh, uh, maintain that july we are going to be launching a vehicle and we are and those uh, timelines are pretty concrete Wonderful. And just on the technology part, I missed that. Uh, can you please uh, put some color, uh, put some more color on that? Like you mentioned, the new product that you are launching about market size of 4,000 to 5,000 CS. No, I had only talked uh, talked about the weldable crossing, uh, which we had got a significant order from railways, and we are going to get our final approvals very shortly. So I think the question was that what is the market size for that business? So I highlighted the market size for that business. But in terms of uh, how our revenues will pan out, I think it is too early for us to comment because uh, a lot will depend on how uh, on 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 our foundry cap uh, how and when our foundry capacities uh, come online. So depending on that, I think uh, in quarter. Uh, by end of quarter two or quarter three, we'll be in in a in a more realistic position to give guidelines on the same. Okay, so thank you very much, sir, and all the best for the future. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Priyesh Babaria from Max Life Insurance. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity and congratulations for a good set of numbers. So my first question is on ELCV. Uh, so what are our targets in terms of production uh, for FY25 and FY26? And what kind of a revenue and margin are they expecting on the same? Or can you give some color on this, this business? So again, in terms of uh, margins, I think it is uh, too early for us to comment. I think uh, post the launch and when we have uh, once we start supplies, we'll get a better uh, feel on the margins. But one thing I can be I can assure you that we are going to be uh, uh, from day one we are going to be margin positive on that business. Uh, secondly, in terms of numbers, again I think first year uh, we are looking to do upward of 500 vehicles. I think if we can manage that, we will be very happy with the business. Sure. And my second question is on uh, the JV, which we had actually uh, executed uh, with the CAF, uh, which is uh, based in France and major players in the passenger mobility sector. Are there any updates on the same? Or because uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, metro coaches which are actually coming up across India. So can you give some updates on, the, on that, the same JV? So, so yeah, so it's, a, it's right now we had an MOU with them, and uh, we are working on on uh, as you said, a lot of tenders coming up. So we are working on on the metro tenders uh, we have with them. I think as and when we uh, we win a significant uh, bid along with them, uh, you will see uh, see further updates on that on 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 our partnership with them. Okay, so are we expecting any kind of a uh, win in this JVS search? Again, you know, these are very speculative. We, whether we can expect a win or not, very difficult to say. But uh, definitely that is a business which we are looking at. Sure. And and what was the our working uh, capital uh, in FI24 in terms of number of days? And how much we can expect in FI25 and 26? The yeah, working capital is around uh, around 75 days, and I think that trend will uh, will remain in FI25 also. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, that's all from my side. Thank you, and all the best for the future quarters. Thank you, thank you. I think uh, given the timelines which we had, we can take uh, I think one or two more questions. Okay, sir. The next question is from the line of Rajesh Vora from Jain May Ventures. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, uh, gentlemen. Uh, congrats on uh, super set of numbers, uh, as well as the exhibition of Bona Trans. Vivek, you have consistently tried to, uh, you know, backward integrate, and Bona Trans is a big uh, 
investment and that's in that direction. So the journey of Jupiter Wagon uh, in backward integration uh, 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 direction, how are we after this, are we done or is there still missing pieces? Uh, so again, uh, Rayaji, thank you. See, uh, I think right now we are uh, looking to uh, consolidate uh, all the new segments which we have entered into. I think that is our focus. In terms of whether we are done or not, I think uh, this is a question which is very difficult to answer. If certain very strong opportunities come in future, definitely we will look into it. But I think... Uh, Today, if you look at the kind of products which uh, we have already established, I think we have now, uh, besides steel, which I don't, we have no intentions of getting into the steel business, I think we are pretty much, uh, we have covered all the major uh, products which we used to, which, which are bought out for us. Wonderful. And one side point, uh, Bona Trans, you paid around 270-odd crores for acquiring the company. So what uh, currently the capacity is 100,000 wheel sets per annum. So is it being poorly utilized? What is the state of the plant? Why do we need to invest such a high amount of 1,000 to 1,500 crores? Uh, and what would have been the cost if you had to put a greenfield plant of a 1 lakh a wheel set? So currently, uh, uh, the capacity is not 100,000. What we are saying is that post-expansion will be 100,000. And currently, it's not a completely, the plant is, doesn't have the complete backward integration. So today, we have to buy black, uh, black material from outside. And, and uh, then we do the assembly, the and the machining and everything, boarding, all those operations are done. So what we are, uh, our focus is to uh, post acquisition to completely integrate the facility and again further increase the capacity to 100,000 wheel sets. Right now, as I mentioned, the capacity is about close to uh, 15 to 20,000 uh, 20, wheel sets per annum. Oh, okay, wonderful. Thank you so much, Vivekji, and uh, wish you all the very best for 10,000 crore revenue goals. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kaushal Kedia from Walford. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, thank you for taking my question. Just wanted to understand what is the update on the global tender that was supposed to happen in February? So, uh, as of now, we, we don't have any uh, specific update on the tender. I think it's because of the, the election process. I think you will see uh, movement, I think, post-elections, uh, you will see. Uh, I think we'll start hearing from the railways. But what I can understand is that railway is still pretty uh, serious on, on uh, getting global designs. So, so is this like the global tender is like a first step towards moving towards own own designs, right? Like the wagon manufacturer will give his own design uh, instead of the RDSO giving their own design. Yes, it is. But we are already, uh, if you look at the private wagons which we are doing right now, especially the new design wagons, which is coming from the private manufacturers, RDSO is not uh, making those designs. Those designs are being done by the private players themselves. Oh, so, so earlier in your conversation, you mentioned that there's a tender of 6,000 wagons which will be finalized shortly. So this was not, you were not referring to the global tender, that is separate. No, I was not referring to the global tender. There's a separate tender which is under finalization. So what I understand is because of decision making or because of the election, nothing is moving. You should expect some movement maybe from August onwards. Uh, no, from July onwards. In June, the government will get formed. So July onwards. Okay, so okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Due to time constraint, that will be the last question for the day. I will now like to have.